Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And uh, personally, I'm very excited to be teaching you this class because this is the part of calculus that I personally think is just really, really useful and uh, very easy to understand once it's presented to you in the right way. Okay, so up until now in calculus, let me just do a quick review. In calculus 1, you learn the concept of a derivative, you know, the rate of change of something. You learn the concept of the integral, the opposite of a derivative. You've learned uh, how to take integrals and derivatives of lots of different functions. That's what most of Calculus 1 is, is all about. And then when you get to Calculus 2, you learn how to do different types of integration, the different types of techniques of integration, just different mathematical tricks to bang through those integrals that are hard, that are sometimes difficult to solve. Okay, and you also learn some other things in Calculus 2, talk a little bit about polar coordinates, parametric equations and some of these other disjointed topics that really don't relate to each other so much they're just sort of things you need to learn and put in your tool bag okay and then you transition on into calculus 3 which is what this is about and this entire course is going to be effectively calculus 1 but in three dimensions in, in two and in, well, in three dimensions actually okay and we're gonna do that many different ways and the reason it's useful is because in real life you know when you did your derivatives and your integrals before you were talking about you know, functions that you could draw on a two-dimensional surface like a blackboard, okay? It's really useful, and you can use them for lots and lots of things, but in real life, let's say you have a pipe this big around, and you have a flow, a fluid flow going through that pipe. Well, obviously, that's a, that's a problem in three dimensions, you know? The, the, the viscosity is going to be different depending on where you're at across that pipe. The velocity of the fluid might be different. The boundary conditions on the edge of the pipe are going to influence how that fluid flows through the pipe, and so it's very much a three-dimensional problem, okay? Same thing with, uh, just to pick a different area, an area I personally uh, have, have done a lot with in my personal interest, is electromagnetism, okay, when you study electromagnetism. So if you have an antenna, like this little finger here is an antenna, like on your car, well, that is radiating energy in three dimensions, okay? And so you need to have a way to express that, and you can't just do an integral uh, that you've been doing before and apply it to that problem without knowing how to do it. So you have to work in three dimensions. So that's the motivation. This entire uh, uh, DVD and the entire course of Calculus 3 is going to teach you the tools to do calculus in three dimensions. We're going to have some funny uh, notation along the way that may confuse some people at the beginning. We ha may have some definitions that are a little bit different. But I'm going to start at the beginning and build upon things and uh, just stick with me from beginning to end and you'll be an expert in it in no time. And to give you just uh, that much more uh, motivation, just, just sort of one little nugget I'll give you. When you finish this class, you will have the knowledge up here to understand the math behind, for instance, Maxwell's field equations that govern electromagnetic uh, radiation, light basically, that uh, radio waves, microwaves, whatever, okay? So you will know the mathematical <coughs> uh, understanding to pick up a book and understand something that really not too many people will have the opportunity to learn about. Uh, you can apply it to electromagnetism, aerodynamics, fluid flow, any of those things. They all use the vector calculus that we're going to learn in this class, and that's why it's so crucially important for all areas of engineering and science and mathematics. Okay, So this section's one piece of paper. It's not a long section. I just wanted to kind of break it out from the other stuff just to kind of give you a little solid basis. This is something I know you know about already. It's not a big deal. I just want to present it to you here for reference in case you may have forgotten a few things. What we're going to do is we're going to introduce 3D Cartesian coordinates. Okay, So up until you know, now, most of you have dealt with functions of, of x, f of x. So you plug a number in x, you get a f of x out, and you can plot that on a two-dimensional plot, x, y, plot, okay? So what would that look like? Just this just review. There's nothing simple here. So you could say, you know, recall, okay, that if you have an x, y graph like here, like this, x or f of x, however you want to call it, let's say I have a point at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm just going to put this at three, four, five, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of points on here and we're just going to talk about them, okay? So what if I have a point at here at one, two, three, four, five, comma, one, two, three, okay? So here's a point uh, at five, comma, three, okay? And we're going to call that point Q. It's just a point. That's all it is. There's nothing fancy here. And then we're going to put another point on here at one, two, X is two, and Y is one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to put a point up here, and we're going to call that point P. And this point is at 2, 5. Did you go over 2, up 5. Okay, so there's nothing fancy here. This is just algebra, right? All right, so just to line things up a little bit, this is the point here, 
and this is the x value here, and this is the y value here, okay? So this is two dimensions. There's nothing new here, okay? How would you calculate the distance between these two points? This distance from here to here, okay? Now, I hope you, you all know this, and I'm sure you all do. You just use the distance formula. Nothing fancy about that. What is the distance formula, okay? You could say that the distance between P and Q is going to be given by the square root of, and the, my notation is going to be like this, x sub 1 minus x sub 0 squared plus y sub 1 minus y sub 0 squared, and I'm taking the square root of the whole thing, okay? What am I doing here? I'm taking the two points. One of these points, let's call it Q, this point here, let's say this is point number 1, okay? Uh, its x value, x sub 1, is going to be subtracted from the x value of this guy, which is going to give me this. I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to take his y value and subtract his y value, and I'm going to get this quantity. I'm going to square it. I'm going to add those two things together, take the square root, and that is the actual distance. I mean, if I take a ruler and I actually measure it, this will calculate the distance between the points, okay? So this is all, you know, review, but if you were going to actually calculate this, you would just say 5, starting here, 5, minus 2, squared plus, and then the y value, y1, is 3 minus 5, okay? And you want to square that as well. Now, I'm going to take one little moment here to remind you of something you probably already know. It doesn't, know, it doesn't matter which point is 1 and which point is 0. It doesn't matter. I could have easily started and said this point is point number 1 and this point is 0, as long as I go 2 minus 5 here and 5 minus 3 here, because I'm sub squaring both of these terms, it doesn't matter which order I do the subtraction as long as I'm consistent. As long as I pick one point to be point 1 and one point to be point uh, uh, 0 or, or point naught, sometimes you hear x naught, then, uh, then you'll get the right answer either way. So what am I going to have under here? Okay, what am I going to have under here? 5 minus 2 is 3 squared, okay, and then 3 minus 5 is going to be negative 2 squared, okay? You see I'm squaring both of them, so under the radical I'm going to have 9 plus 4, and I'm going to have the square root of 13, and if you bang out, bang that out in the calculator, square root of 13 is roughly 3.6 uh, distance units. What unit is it? Well, it just depends on what unit I'm using here. If I'm using inches here, or if I'm using feet here, whatever unit I'm using for my x and my y is going to be how many distance units this is. So this is something you learn back in, in basic algebra. Why am I telling you this here? Because I'm going to extend this to, again, something you probably already know, and we're going, to, we're going to talk about it in three dimensions. How could you take this and do it in three dimensions when you have an X and a Y and a Z? And, you know, I know that you probably already know this, but it, my goal is to start with the foundation, the bedrock, okay, the things that all of us know from basic algebra, and to incrementally build them so that everything you learn doesn't seem like a foreign concept. It's going to be so fluid and so so understandable that everybody will be able to grasp it. So that's what I'm doing here. Here's how you calculate the distance between two points when you only have two dimensions, x and y. What do we do when we're dealing with three-dimensional space, like real life, right around us? So in real life, I have it, you know, x and maybe y come in like this, and I may have z coming up here, and I may define a point right over here. I have three coordinates to describe that point. How do I calculate the distance between those points? So in 3D space, which, by the way, is going to be all that this course is about, is three-dimensional space and the calculus of 3D space. Um, how would I calculate the distance between two points? Okay, again, I'm, I'm sure you probably know this, but let me show you something I want you to get real comfortable with, and that's one of the reasons I'm putting this section together anyway, is to show you this drawing right here. What does that look like to you? Okay, this is supposed to be a representation of the three-coordinate axis, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and switch colors and, and show you here usually how you write it. The one coming out of the board is almost always labeled as X. The one going to the right is almost always labeled as Y. And the one going straight up is almost always labeled Z. I want you to burn that into your memory because you're going to have to remember that. And you're going to have to use that, okay? X, Y, Z. If you forget where the letters go, it just follows the right-hand rule that you might have learned in physics. X crossed into Y should point up to Z. So just take your right hand curl it through X into Y and it should go up and your thumb should point up into Z. So if you forget if this is X or Y, whatever, just put them in a place so X going into Y gives you Z. We'll talk all, all about that a little bit later as well, okay? So, what would my two points look like here, okay? What would my two points look like here? Uh, well, let's say I have a point right here, okay? Let's say I have a point right here. Well, what's going to happen here is I'm going to have 
Let me drop this down here. Okay. There's going to be some x value of that point, okay, which is going to be ho however many x units along this axis. Okay. And there's going to be, if I'm, you can see the projection over here into y, there's going to be some y number of units over here. Okay. And then up here in the z-axis, obviously there's going to be some number of units above this plane that's going to be here, right? So if this is point P, that's going to be x sub 0, y sub 0, z sub 0, or x naught, y naught, z naught. All I'm saying here is I'm drawing a picture for you. I'm telling you this point has three numbers, x, y, and z, that, that describe where the point is, and you can just you can map it out as far as, okay, this thing is, is down on the x-axis this far, it's over on the y-axis this far, and it's up on z. And you have to kind of draw these dotted lines to get your bearings a little bit because you're drawing it on a two-dimensional surface, so it's hard to see otherwise, okay? Now, if you had another point, what I'm going to do here, because I wasn't thinking ahead of time, is I'm going to extend my axis, axis out like this. <coughs> Excuse me. If you had another point, and I'm going to call this point Q, and that's going to be at x1, y1, z1. It's just a, the ones just mean it's a different point. That's all it means. It's all the, I'm just using the different subscripts because I have two different points. I don't want you to confuse them. Okay. Well, it's the same kind of thing. This guy is going to extend over somewhere on the x-axis. Okay. And he's also going to extend, and he's going to cross, he's going to cross somewhere on the y-axis, and he's obviously up here on the z-axis. So that's the general description there, okay? You have two points, and you have a coordinate that corresponds to each axis, okay? So how would you calculate the distance between them, okay? Well, the distance between P and Q is just an extension of what we just did a minute ago in two dimensions, okay? So you have x1 minus x0 squared plus y1 minus y0 squared plus uh, z1 minus z0 squared. And again, it really doesn't matter which of these points is one, point number one and which one's point zero, um, as long as you're consistent in the subtraction. So here I've labeled this as point one, so when I subtract x1 minus x0, I'm going to do it like this, x1 minus x0 and y and z accordingly. If I flip it all around, it really isn't going to matter because these squares are going to help me here and they're going to they're going to make everything positive anyway. Okay, so as an example, just a quick example to show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, let's say the point P is at coordinates negative 3, comma, 4, comma, negative 5. Those are the points uh, associated with point P. And then Q is going to be at 0, comma, 8, comma, 7. Okay, so you can see P, uh, you know, and I haven't really drawn it exactly right here with my signs, okay? I just sort of was drawing a general diagram for you here. In reality, P, X is negative. Okay, so for this particular point, this particular example I'm showing you, not really related to this exact drawing here, but this particular point, P is going to be in the negative x direction. It's going to be over there through the board, so to speak. Okay, 4 is 4 units in the y direction, and 5, negative 5 in z is not going to be up. It's actually going to be down. So this point, P, for this problem is actually going to be that way and down. Okay, and... Uh, you know, for Q, you can see here there's actually no X component at all, so it's, it's nothing's coming out here. Y goes over 8, and then Z comes over 7. So, you know, you can kind of visualize where P and Q are. But uh, regardless, how would you calculate the distance between them, P, Q? Okay, how would you calculate the distance? Well, you're going to define one of them as point number 1, and one of them as point 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick P as point 1, and Q as point 0, because it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to do my subtraction P and then minus q. So for the x, the x coordinates, negative 3 minus 0, subtracting the x squared, plus 4 minus 8 squared, plus negative 5 minus 7 squared. Okay? Negative 5 minus 7 squared. Now notice in my little diagram I gave you up here, I chose point number 1 to be Q, because I have 1's here, and P's to be the, the point 0. But here when I'm doing my subtraction here, I'm kind of flipping it around. I'm saying, well, I'm going to choose P is my point 1 and do the subtraction this way, because you'll see it really isn't going to matter in the end. As long as you start at one point and subtract the corresponding uh, uh, coordinate and then, and then square them, you're going to get the right answer. Okay. So, what am I going to have here? Negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3 squared plus 4 minus 8 is negative 4 squared plus 
negative 5 uh, minus 7 is negative 12 squared. Okay? Notice I did not do a lot of steps in my head. I didn't square these things uh, in my head and put that answer down. I just calculated what's inside the parentheses and left the square alone because I want to have all of my steps laid out um, so it's just crystal clear for everybody. Okay? Negative 3 squared is 9 plus negative 4 squared is 16 plus negative 12 squared is 144. Okay, and when you do all this stuff, when you add 9 and 16 and 144, you'll get 169. And then when you take the square root of that, you will get the number of 13. So this 13 is the distance in three-dimensional space between these two uh, points. So when you define x, y, and z, and you were to plot that thing, and you would put it in inches, let's say, negative 3 inches, 4 inches, negative 5 inches, all right, or meters or centimeters or whatever you're working with, and do the same thing with Q and, and actually put, point th put that point in three-dimensional space and actually took a ruler and measured between them, you're going to get 13 units, 13 centimeters or whatever it is you're talking about, okay? So that is really all I have for this section. It's just a, a basic introduction to the course. It's just showing you mainly what I wanted to show you is that using the knowledge you already know about uh, the stuff that you already learned about, in this case the distance formula from basic algebra, it's very extensible to three dimensions. You see the equation looks a little bit more complicated because you have an extra variable, right? You have an extra coordinate, the z coordinate, but fundamentally the math is the same. It's very extensible. Once you know something about the first thing, it's pretty easy to extend it to three dimensions, okay? And that's really why I'm presenting this here as a standalone thing because I really want you to believe that, okay? You're in calculus three and a lot of us are like, oh my goodness, calculus three. This is tough stuff, okay? Well the truth is, if you understand Calculus 1 and some of the techniques in Cal 2 uh, by some extension methods and by showing you how these things work and how to br branch it out into three dimensions, you'll really ace this class, okay? You just have to work through it. The final thing I'll say <coughs> is that you really need to get good in this class, and I'm going to help you as we go. You really need to get good at visualizing things in three dimensions, okay? And I'll show you as we get to those types of problems what you need to do. But what you're going to find is that almost every single problem, when we get past the first few sections here, almost every problem is going to have a function in three-dimensional space. And you know, you're not going to have to calculate that function with your head and like actually plot it, but you'll have to have some way of internalizing what's going on here. Because if you don't, then you're going to probably end up not understanding how to solve the problem without some sort of core fundamental understanding of, of fundamentally what we're doing. And I'm going to show you that here. So this drawing of this three-dimensional X, Y, and Z, get used to that. Learn how to draw that because for almost every problem, I want you to draw that out so you can visualize where your coordinates lie. That's going to be important. I do that myself on almost every problem. Okay. Fundamentally understand it. Work through the problem step-by-step step with me, and you will do well in Calculus 3.